I'm Desiree from Hearts and Pearls and today I have Ron Alford with me and for those of you who don't know Ron is actually my boyfriend and um, so I'm excited to have him here today to sit down with us. Um, Ron and I met um, through some mutual friends about, um, about a year ago mm -hmm. and one thing that stands out to me with through meeting you and um, just our relationship as it developed. Ron and I are both very purposeful people, very intentional, and so um, our mutual friends saw that we had, you know, common beliefs <clears throat> and values, and it was evident to me after meeting Ron and our relationship began developing that um, whatever was going to happen, what we did was going to have purpose, and um, that 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 part excites me be able to sit down with Ron and have him here with me today and thank you for agreeing to mm -hmm. do this and you know being okay with this um, different idea um, you know when I started Hearts and Pearls about four and a half years ago when I think of Hearts and Pearls and what it means to me I go back to the beginning it, it was tough for me and it um, Hearts and Pearls means so much to me because of the beginning being a tough situation that the odds were against me. I was a single mother um, starting my own business when my daughter was three months old and through Hearts and Pearls and through the birth of my daughter um, I found a lot of hope and inspiration and it empowered me and within a couple of years of growing my business and just seeing how it was developing and growing um, a passion began burning inside of me of wanting to bring hope to others, wanting to give back. And um, I thought for quite some time that I would start a nonprofit and it'd be completely separate, separate from Hearts and Pearls and <clears throat> I would find a way to give back through that. And the more I thought about it and the more um, I talked to other people, it seemed like Hearts and Pearls was in my life for a reason. That's what brought me the hope and that I, the best plan for me was to bring hope and give back through Hearts and Pearls. So about three months ago, um, you know, I've been talking to Ron about this off and on, about my ideas of going this direction or that direction. About three months ago, um, I kind of mapped out this plan and I finally figured it out what I was supposed to be doing. And that felt good to me because I know for me that when I know I'm supposed to be doing something, when I'm passionate about it, it's like I need to... I need to follow through um, and so when I finally felt like I got to that point of like okay I know what I'm doing need to be doing it felt uplifting and so you know it was that I decided we would hearts and pearls would seasonally um, pick a cause or a benefit that we wanted to give back uh, to and since we release a new line every season I decided that season we would um, proceeds would give back to the cause or benefit from that season. And we'd also, whatever the cause or benefit was, we'd focus our attention to bring hope and to give back through our blogs, social media, and everything. So as this, you know, to give all the details, as this plan was unfolding in front of me, um, I started to really move forward, like, okay, pick the first person, um, cause I wanted to reach out to, and I realized, um, it kind of hit me with a ton of bricks that um, I was always planning to give back and do, do this, that there's a story right in front of me. And it, um, you know, so tonight or today we're going to um, share a little bit of a personal story. But our purpose, my purpose is to bring hope, and give back, and just um, light. So Ron, um, I'm sure there's people that have no clue, you know, kind of what happened about five weeks ago, but if you can kind of share just the process of learning and what, th what, that, how, what that was like in the beginning of finding out everything that just happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you bet. I, uh, six or seven weeks ago, we went on a trip, our family with Dez's daughter and my two twin boys went on a, a weekend away and had a just had a ton of fun and swimming and crabbing and doing a bunch of stuff came back and one of my twin boys my twins are seven and one of them 
you know, just started swelling up and just having all these different symptoms and went in to get tested and they thought he had an allergic reaction to amoxicillin because he'd had strep throat. And then they thought maybe he had an allergic reaction to shellfish from everything we did. And so testing, testing, antibiotics, more antibiotics, blood tests, you know, kind of repeated stuff. And after a while, finally on August 2nd, uh, the doctors just said, man, none of this is working. Take him up to Seattle Children's and, you know, let's just do, see what's going on. So when he first got there, they do an x-ray to eliminate stuff. And right there, they found a mass in his chest uh, that they didn't know quite right away. But uh, by later that night, we found out that he had leukemia. And so, you know, to hear that Van has leukemia, your son. And uh, so just... The, the next 11 days, basically living in Seattle Children's, you know, he was there 100% and uh, started chemotherapy a few days later. And, you know, just kind of the realization of like these months and years to come now, life is, is quite different. And uh, yeah, just, just to hear that about your kid, like your, 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 your child has cancer. To me, that, that little boy is the epitome of athleticism and life and energy and more, much more than I was as a seven-year-old. And uh, you almost think he's invincible, he, other than little falls off his bike or this or that. And just to hear all of a sudden he has cancer and just even coming home today from being with him, his, his hair is gone and he looks like a completely different boy. And, and uh, so that's kind of how it all transpired. Yeah. Um, it makes me, you know, go back to that last trip we had and... Um, how much fun we had. And I think for me, that trip's gonna be forever a memory because um, in, the, in the moments of that trip, I just remember thinking life is so perfect, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's like, life is never perfect, but it felt that way. Mm -hmm. And then learning news like that, a van right after, um, it's hard to, to even put into words the night and day of the shift of your life in a moment like that. Um, but I think about, you know, you learning that news and um, just that over the past, you know, six weeks, um, the emotional ro roller coaster that it's been, the ups and downs and, um, you know, talk a little bit about that, about the ups and downs of just finding out and, you know, not even mm -hmm. knowing what, what type of cancer you had. And um, yeah, I think, I think just the uncertainty and it's, it's, it's weird looking back. I, I wrote something on this and you know this, but you know, anyways, 12 years ago, I did a race, the first race I had ever done that raised money for leukemia and lymphoma society. And, um, uh, I was one of the only people that, that did this in Hawaii that didn't really have a personal cause to it. And, um, it's weird how things come full circle. And so to hear that, it just, you know, if, if I, to us, we're very spiritual and to me, I don't believe in coincidence. I think it's something where, you really see how things happen because of his plan, because of God's plan. And I think that was very peaceful in a sense, but the every hour of just feeling like, okay, we got this. This is something where I've always known we're going to have incredibly hard challenges in our life. And I believe that to the core of me because anyone that wants to somehow, some way have an impact on other people, I just believe you have to go through struggles. You have to go through hard things and, and, be an example of how you live through them and you feel that and you feel the peace from it. And then 30 minutes later you see this boy and you know, you're just an idiot. You can't, you know, all that stuff is gone and, and you, you lose perspective. And, uh, I think that's probably been the, the hardest thing is just, just seeing him and seeing his twin who doesn't understand his twin brother that is now in school and doesn't know why his twin's not in school. And so it's just the, you know, you're trying to learn the scientific stuff to it, what's really going on in his body and how much do you explain to him? How much do you explain to his twin? How much do you explain to, to your daughter? Just, and, uh, and trying to be brave so that he sees you're brave yet you're not brave. And that's just probably been the hardest part. Yeah. I know it just, you know, seeing you being with you through this and walking with you through it. Um, it is such a ripple effect of how a diagnosis like this or anything hard that happens in your life affects everyone around you and everybody it affects everybody in a different way as well 
Um, and just everything you talked about of, you know, a lot of tensions on Vanny and we don't want PK to feel left out and, you know, bringing balance and then also being, being real with the kids. Like, Hey, this is, this is going to be, you know, a, a battle, but we're here yeah. for Vanny. We're going to be cheerleaders. And, um, you know, I, I think about when I first, when we first found out, um, I think the hardest part for me in the beginning was, you know, there was fear of what if the doctor was going to come back and say he only had a couple months to live, you know? And I think um, all those, you know, questionable times of doing the, re you know, tests and knowing, you know, what, even what type of cancer he is, is has, um, I think back to the first, I mean, within eight hours of us finding out, our first real conversation was we, me and you were both aware of how strongly this was going to affect us both mm -hmm. and our family and the importance, you know, of us staying close and strong as a family for each other, for our own health, and then for our kids and for Vanny as he, as he goes through this. And, um, I thought that, you know, for me was, was huge. Um, I, one thing, you know, walking through, walking through this with you, and I know I've said this before, but it, it's, it, uh, it's so impressive to me that you find out your seven-year-old son has cancer, um, and the, the ups and downs and everything that it's brought, you know, you still have your life that you have to take care of. And what I've seen and what I've observed with you is um, you have continued to give me the same love that you gave me prior, continue to love the boys and give them the same amount of attention and then give back to Hartley and, and then your job, you know, you're, you're such a focused person that there were so many times that I was just, if there was ever a time to just step back and just take a time out, it would be a time of tragedy like this of not, you know, your son being mm -hmm. sick and, um, it was almost like I was waiting for that day for you to just to, um, I don't know, give up in one area or, and it never happened. And so, I mean, that's one of the reasons why I'm so in love with the person you are. Number one is, um, because of who you are in times like this. But I think what's more important, you know, even I think of this, how, how does someone, you know, that gets news like this, a Vanny, um, how do you do it? You know, how do you continue to give back to your life the same way that you do before to me, to Hartley, to the boys, to your, to your job, mm -hmm. to your house, to the people all around you, <clears throat> you know, friendships haven't, it's not like you push friendships to the side, you're, mm -hmm. Well, thank you. I, we're getting personal, which is awesome. Um, I, I don't know. I, I just, to me, being emotionally prepared for anything, whether it's just what goes on today or in life, I just I feel like if our daily actions are tied to our purpose of being here and what we're called to live for, uh, it's all part of that. And it's obviously there's times when I'm out. I mean, just even this morning, I'm running out in the woods, just me, and that's sure a time to kind of be real if it's you're driving in your car, but it, whatever, but it's just, I think that really helps me. We're not going through nearly the trials that a lot of other people are going through. And I have an incredible support system. We have an incredible support system. We have faith. It's the depth of our faith is so strong. And, uh, I don't know. I just, I, I have to keep reminding myself of that and keep holding on to that. Uh, Cause yeah, otherwise, maybe tomorrow will be the day where I'll just say screw it. <laughs> I don't know, but but uh, no, no way. I mean, we can handle this. We got it, and it's just, and that little boy needs needs us, and and uh, they they all, all three kids need us, and mm -hmm. it's and you know to me that's that's just why we're here is to help each other through things, and it's just I'll say one last thing on this note. I mean. I can't get it out of my head. There's no way I could let other people down. I'll let myself down a lot, but 
the things that have come from our families, the things that have come from friendships, the, th the support that's come from people that I don't even know in other states and other nations. And it is, yeah, I'll get quite emotional because it's overwhelming um, to think about just how big people's hearts are to give and to, to help. And it's, there's no way I could ever say thanks. There's no way I could ever. So how could I, how could I like turn my back on that and, and, and somehow not be, have grace and have, have compassion and have energy and not be even more driven by this to, to somehow be better for others. And, uh, that's what I try to fill my thoughts with. Mm, I love that. The thousands of prayers too, you know, I think about mm. um, that day in the hospital when we started to name off states and, and countries um, to Vanny of people yeah. praying, it was incredible. Um, yeah. You know, I don't know even know how long Rise Above has been kind of a life mantra for you. Um, but you know, I, I've known about it because of your business and everything. Um, and it makes me think about, you know, rise above, you know, that's such a big part of you and your life and who you are, you know, maybe someone's watching or whatever. What would you say to somebody that's gotten a hard diagnosis or their home mm. just burnt down or whatever it may be hard financial situation mm. a divorce a children a child dies um a significant other dies there's so so many people are hurting in this world and i think that's the main really the the depth of my passion is this is a tough world to <clears> live <throat> in and there's life happens and things happen that are so incredibly difficult um what would you say to somebody, whatever they're going through, their boyfriend just broke up with them. You know, when you're 16, that's, that's the end of the world. <laughs> right. I mean, I, yeah. gosh, you know, right. And it is. how would they rise above? Let's just, mm. you know, and it, when tragedy happens, whatever life brings, how, how would, how would they rise above? Yeah. So just w two things I'll say. One, is it's easy almost to laugh about that my boyfriend just broke up with me for yeah. the 16 year old because when you say that in context or comparison to my home just burnt down or I lost a, a family member or something that's just but you know what whatever it is for that person at that moment I'm try I'm, I'm really learning through this that it, there's no use comparing it's like what other people's struggles are is their own and that's you know I, I've had people even this last month and a half or so say um, Oh, how can I feel this or that? Would I know what you're going? And it's like, it's, it's not even about that. It's like, whatever you're going through is hard. And I think the first thing is be accepting of it. Like, it's okay. Like I'm trying to be really, uh, embracing of my emotions and just like not trying to fight it or feel like I have to be this or that, but just be really like, yeah, it's cool. I'm, it's okay to feel angry. It's okay to feel lost. And, um, Yeah. <clears throat> um, it's okay to feel everything, you know, and it's, it's not only okay, but I think it's good. And it's like, you know, if there's anything I could give to my, my kids, um, it's that they see someone that's real and someone that's authentic and someone that's not trying to act or, or be something he's not. And, uh, you know, so to, to say, how can someone else rise? But, you know, um, obviously the first thing I'd say is what's, who do you live for? You know, there's no, nothing I could say bigger or stronger than this life is temporary. And I believe strongly that we're here for a short season and, uh, you know, that's, that's peaceful to remember that. And so there's a higher power that I serve and that helps me have a lot of perspective in times of struggle. That's the first thing that helps. The second thing is protection. Like every morning I got to wake up and put on my armor, so to speak. And that means number one, having a, a support group of, of loved ones and friends that are just, that are like-minded thinkers mm -hmm. like you are mm -hmm. and people around me that just are like that. And that's what I love about you is just, you help me with that. Um, what are you reading? What are you saying to yourself? What are the things that you're, you're filling your mind with? What's the music I'm listening to when I'm deep into the woods running or when I'm in my car, you know, what, what is that stuff? And so that stuff helps protect me 
uh, and I think any of us as humans, we're all, you know, all just small mind, you know, very human. And so that's probably the biggest thing I'd say. And then I think if we really have a, a, a clear idea of who we're trying to serve and, and the example we're trying to be, I just won't let my kids down. There's no way I'll let those kids down. And so when I visualize that and I think about it, there's no way I'm, I'm not going to rise above what yeah. I'm going through. Yeah. I love that. So good. You know, when, um, again, just going back to why I'm even sitting down with you in this video, why, why, why do this? Obviously not because either one of us is super comfortable talking about this, you know, it's not something I necessarily, <clears throat> yes, please. I want to open up and be vulnerable, you know? Um, but the reason why I do it is because underneath the, you know, the deeper meaning is bringing hope and also showing people like, hey, tough things happen and we're all going through a hard time. And I'm seeing you, you know, I, I'm walking next to you through this and you've been such a uh, beacon of hope for me and, and to the kids. And um, that there's so much beauty in when you're going. Sorry about that guys, um, our camera just died. So we're jumping right back into it, trying to start right where we were. And what I was um, talking to you about when the camera went off was um, the reason why we're even sitting here today, you know, is underneath it all is that the passion that I had to bring hope back through Hearts and Pearls and um, you know, that people are going through a lot of things and just an example of you know, hard things happen and how you live through those. Um, but one of the questions I wanted to ask you was, what does hope mean to you? The hope, um, I think, man, I, there's so many layers of that to me. I think we all know how we wake up every morning. And I always think when I think of the word hope, I mean, to me, it's everything. It's like, it's what gives me energy when I first wake up of like the hope of just that day. And there's, the different levels. Like I hope the Steelers win on Monday night this week. And, <laughs> and I hope that's the answer of the day. Um, and I hope I hit my business goals this, this month, you know, yeah. there, there's the hope in the, you know, the short term. And then, you know, the big, the bigger version of it is just everything. I, you know, one of my favorite books is called the man's search for meaning. And it's Dr. Viktor Frankl, the whole study of, of people that survived through the concentration camps, even that they had, it, there's this deeper hope of what they were going to do afterwards. And a lot of the people that perished gave up hope. Mm. And that's obviously the extreme, you know, the extreme one side of it. But I just think for each of us, like hope of, of what's to come. And I think just even today, like just present moment earlier today, I'm swimming with, with my one son. And, and, you know, while Vanny is watching us mm -hmm. and just the hope of like, man, we're going to get through this. And when I, when I carry him back up from the dock and, uh, and just look in his eyes and just like, man, it's going to be so cool next summer when you're swimming with us again. And just the things we're going to do even this winter and just like somehow hopefully giving him hope, mm -hmm. um, we all need hope. I mean, it's just like, it's, it, man, you could see the smile on his face and it's, one of my favorite parts this last five weeks is actually was, I was FaceTiming him. Like, uh, he just called after a big doctor's appointment three days ago where they, uh, had revealed results after a month of chemotherapy. And, um, the last thing he said on there, he just looked at me and he, he kind of, it's been hard. Like he'll have, he still has a really peaceful heart through all this, but it's mm -hmm. hard to get him to, you know, he just has no energy and he's so sick. The side effects of all the chemo or, um, but he just said, he said, daddy, we're winning. Mm. And it was like, he gave like kind of a thumbs up and he just said, we're winning. And meaning that the, the, the medicine is beating the bad guys. You know, that's all he knows is that all, there's all these bad guys that, that are in his body. And he's like, we're winning this. Mm. And, uh, to me, that's hope. It's mm. like that kid has hope and it's that, that's what it means to me. Mm. And what, so, I mean, maybe it's the same answer that you just said what hope is to you but and you also touched on things that bring you hope so overall you know walking through a trial like this what gives you hope 
uh, my faith. I mean, mm -hmm. just the short answer is just that. It's like w eternity, perspective again, and just a clear picture in my mind. Like when I close my eyes, seeing him healthy, seeing, you know, whether it was two months ago when the, there was none of this going on, it was hope for growth of a business or some of the trials that, I, that I've personally been through in the last three years and stuff that you've been, you know, it's mm -hmm. so I, I just think that faith, like, man, I really truly believe Providence is, is strong and, and God's hand is on all of this. And that, that gives me just a lot of peace and hope. Mm -hmm. I love that. Um, you know, as I was, you know, trying to unfold the overall plan of hearts and pearls giving back and then, this happens, finding out with Vanny and the next thing, because, and it's, it's, a, it's a example that I truly am passionate about this, is I immediately, you know, was like, let's make t-shirts, let's do headbands, and it wasn't about, for me, and I know not for you either, because Ron is, if you don't know, probably uh, one of the most, um, humble people in regards to, he doesn't want the attention on him, he doesn't want this Team Vanny thing to be about, you know, about him. He wants it to to give back in a, in a bigger way. If if there's going to be focus on Vanny being sick, you want it to be, to give back in, in a bigger way. And he's been very clear about, you know, any, um, you know, awesome, you know, having incredible support and prayers coming through. And that any donations that have come through, you know, he wants to get back to the um, Leukemia and Lymphoma Society to help families that are really in need. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, there are people that are in, you know, a lot tougher situations um, than we are in. And we we just got some great news with Vanny that he, you know, the, the chemo is working and mm -hmm. he's in remission. And there's a, a long path ahead, a long path. And it's going to, we're going to have the ups and downs and, you know, the, the emotional roller coaster is still ahead. I guess what I'm trying to say is that, um, I found myself automatically going into my passion of finding a way to give back. And I think initially it was like, how can I give back to this situation right here in front of me? You know, make Vanny happy by a team Vanny shirt. Initially, it was not our plan to initially sell them, but to, bring a smile to Vanny's face and then people wanted them. And then it was the idea of making headbands. So what we ended up doing is uh, creating some t-shirts and some headbands and there will be a link at the bottom of the video. And if this video resonates with you, you can click on the link and purchase a shirt or a headband. And I talked to Ron right before this video and you know, he really wants to have any of the further proceeds go to um, the Le Leukemia and Lymphoma Society for other families in need. He feels really good about just the f support that we've had so far. And really that's the deeper meaning of all this, of giving back, of we have this tough si situation, Ron has this tough situation going on. And one of the ways I know for me that I have true fulfillment is being able to help somebody else, being able to give back. And it helps me get out of my own self and put a smile on someone else's face. So it's, you know, it's been incredible to see that this plan unfold and part of it is emotional and touching and was a tad bit ironic how it, you know, the full circle of, you know, just a passion of mine and then mm. this story happens to us <clears throat> and, um, and then we get to experience this and I still see you, you know, thriving and doing incredible things in your life, not 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 letting this knock you down, you know, still um, treating me with love and respect, and just giving back fully to your life and being present and being real. So, I think if that doesn't bring hope or if that's not empowering, I you know what what right. what more what more <clears throat> is there than that? So thank you for agreeing to sit down with me and and talk with me and being okay with my idea that was last minute and mm -hmm. um you tr and for trusting me always <laughs> what a great way to spend a saturday afternoon <laughs> right no problem of course yeah thanks yep